Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. And the video today, I'm gonna to be doing a full new user guide on the Samsung Galaxy A13. I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know to use this phone. After this video is over, you should be an expert at using this phone. Now the video is gonna be broken down into sections. So the first section is gonna be for a brand new user to a Samsung phone and really new to Android phone. So I'm gonna take it down to the super basics, walk you through how to navigate the phone, downloading apps, setting up your email, all the basic things you would need to get going. Um, if you are not a beginner beginner and you don't think you need that information, you can jump past that section to the next section where we will then go over setting up the phone, uh, how to keep your screen on longer, connecting to a Wi-Fi, um, and some other things like that, changing your wallpaper. And then after that, we'll jump into the really, really good stuff, which is the tips and tricks and the hidden features, walk you through all the cool things you can do with this phone to really uh, maximize on all the things Samsung has put in it. After that, I'm gonna show you how to mirror your screen to a TV. So if you have like a video on YouTube or Netflix that you wanna to play to your TV, I'll walk you through the process of how to do that. Then I'll go over how to take a screenshot and then I'll, I'll show you how to troubleshoot the phone. So if you have an issue where your screen is not working properly or the screen stops working, I'll walk you through how to do a soft reset and then we will close out the video with how to factory reset the phone if you need to erase all of your data off the phone and set it up like brand new. So that'll be the last step of the video. So you're gonna learn a lot. The video again will be broken into chapters. If you go down to the description section, you can see all the different time markers and you can jump to the sections that are most relevant for you. Also, before I get started, I just wanna do a quick plug to the uh, website in the upper right corner. Click on that little link and you, it'll take you to our Samsung Galaxy A13 store where you'll find a ton of really useful accessories for this phone, so great cases, um, a, a, a longer battery charger, uh, a wall charger, and a bunch of other cool accessories that will go with this phone and just enhance your experience. So make sure you check out that store. My one ask of you is to hit the like button, but do it right now, don't wait. Do it right now because uh, we produce these videos for free, we don't charge anything. Um, and so uh, you hitting that like button ensures that this video will get a lot of views and in, in the back end, it'll help us continue to do what we're doing in helping you guys learn how to use new technology. So bump that like button for us and let's go ahead and jump in and learn all about the Samsung Galaxy A13. In this section, we're gonna go over how to make phone calls and also how to answer the phone when someone is calling you. So let's start with how to make a phone call. What you're gonna do is go to the green phone icon in the bottom left corner of your screen and tap on the little phone button there. And for us to make a phone call, we're going to enter the phone number. So just the area code and the phone number. And then we're gonna tap the green button here to start the call. And you'll see, this is what it'll look like when you're dialing. And if you'd like to put the phone on speakerphone, you can tap on the speaker button here and that will play it loud if you don't wanna hold it up to your ear. And then if you're ready to disconnect the call, you can simply hit the red button here and that will end the call. So that's how you make a call. Next, I wanna show you how to receive a call. And it's gonna come through a few different ways. So if someone calls you, this is what you'll need to do to answer the phone. So first I'm gonna go over if you're using the phone and someone calls you, what is that gonna look like? So let's initiate a call. And you'll see a little pop-up at the top of the screen. It's gonna show the phone number. And I can either tap on the answer button to pick up the call or tap the decline, the red button to decline it. I'm gonna tap the green button and this is gonna pick up the call and allow me to begin speaking to the person. Hello, who's there? And when you're all done, hit the red button and that will end the call. Now, if I were to turn the phone off, let's say your phone is on the counter and it's not being used, the, when someone calls you, it's gonna look a little different when that call comes through. It's gonna look like this. So I'm initiating another call now. So 
So this is what it'll look like. You'll see these two buttons, green circle and a red circle. To answer it, you have to put your finger on the button and then you have to drag it. That's how you answer it. So really important, um, you don't tap the button, you have to put your finger on it and, and drag. Drag it across the screen and that's how it will pick up the call. And when you're all finished, same thing, just tap the red button to end the call. I wanna show it one more time, just so you guys can see the motion. So call is gonna come in, you'll see the pop-up. This time I'm not gonna answer it, I want to decline the call. So I'm gonna put my finger on the red phone and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag it across the screen and that will decline the call. So now that it's not gonna answer the phone. Okay, so that is how you answer the phone if someone is trying to call you. In this section, we're going over how to navigate the phone and we're gonna start with how to navigate the exterior button. So I'm gonna go over all the buttons you'll see on the outside of the phone and then we'll go over how to navigate the home screen and the different sections of the phone you'll need to know about. So first things first, there's no buttons on the left side of the phone, no buttons. All you'll see on the left is a SIM slot and that's where you would uh, put in the SIM card for the phone and also if you had a memory card in your old phone, you would insert it on this left side here. On the right side of the phone, you'll have a volume up, volume down, and a power button. And also, for those of you that would like to take full advantage of the phone, the power button also works as a a fingerprint reader that you can program to unlock the phone simply when you put your finger on the power button. So that's an important thing to note. Now I have a link to another video where I go over setting up this phone and I show you how to set up that fingerprint sensor. So that video will also be in the description. So make sure you check out that one after you watch this video. Okay, at the very top of the phone, there is nothing, just speakers. And then at the bottom of the phone, you'll have an auxiliary jack here. And sorry, it's just a hair blurry. Let's just fix that. So you will have two things. There we go. The headphone jack here, so you can plug in your wired headphones. And you'll have your charging port. Now this phone uses a type C charging uh, type. So if you needed to buy a new charger, make sure you look for a type C charger. So that's the exterior of the phone. And next we're gonna walk through using uh, or just navigating the screen in general. Okay, so let's talk about navigating the, the home screen. So there's three main buttons on the phone that you'll use to navigate the screen. At the bottom here you'll see there is three buttons, a recent apps button, there is the home button, and the back button. Now let's start with the home button. The home button is used to take you back to this screen, which is considered the home screen. So if you tapped on any one of these little icons known as apps, apps is short for application. Think of an application like uh, a program on a computer. Computers have programs, phones have applications or apps. If I tap on one of these apps, let's say I go to the calculator, and then I'd like to go back to the home screen, I'm just gonna tap on the little circle or the home button at the bottom, and that's gonna take me back to the home screen. So no matter what you're doing, tapping the home button will always take you back to this screen, okay? Next, we're gonna go over the back button on the right side. Now to, to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go to the settings. And let's say I'm in the settings and I were to tap on one of the options, like the uh, advanced features. And let's say I'm looking through the settings and now I wanna go back one page. I'm gonna tap on my back button here to take me back to the last page I was on. So here, now it took me back one step or one page. And if I were to tap the back button again, it's gonna take me out of the app and back home. Watch this. So that's how the back button works. It just takes you back one step 
and once it's taking you back as far as it can, it will just take you back to the home screen. Now the button on the left is called the recent apps button. Now, every time we open one of these little apps here, when we tap the home button, it takes us out of that app and takes us back to the home screen, but the app is still running in the background of the phone. If you tap on this button, recent apps, you can see, guess what? I was just in the settings and it's still open here. And I was just in the calculator and you'll see the calculator application is still open. Apps do not close just because you've gone back to the home screen. They stay running. So if you ever wanna go back to an app you were using, all you have to do is tap recent apps and you can go and swipe through all of the applications you were previously using. Notice a few minutes ago we were using the dialer and there is the dialer, it's still open. Now if you'd like to close these applications because you're no longer gonna use them, you can either swipe up like this, swiping motion up, or you can tap the close all button and this will close all of those applications that are running in the background. Now when I hit recent apps, nothing is open. So that's how you navigate the home screen or and those are the basic buttons you'll be using to navigate the entire phone. Now, once again, we're on what's called the home screen. If you swipe up like this, it will take you to what is called the app drawer. And this is where you'll find all of the applications or apps that come with the phone. And also if you download new applications, they will also show up in this same section. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how to download an application so you can see what that process looks like. But for now, we're just going over where do I find the applications and it's here. Now notice at the top of the screen here, you have these little white circles. These are folders. This is a Google folder that just has Google specific applications. So your Gmail, your Google Maps, your Google Photos are all gonna be in this folder. You have a Metro by T-Mobile folder that has Metro specific applications. And then you have a Samsung folder that will have Samsung specific applications here. So that's the app drawer. Next, by swiping down from the top of the screen, we're gonna just take our finger. At the top of the screen, we're just going to swipe down. This will take us to what is called the notification panel. And here is where you will get uh, notifications uh, regarding different applications that you have synced on your phone. For example, I have my email synced on the phone. So right here I can see I have some new emails. And if I wanted to go to the email app so I can read those emails, I'm just gonna tap right here and it will take me right to my Gmail app. And then I can begin looking at my emails. Don't worry, we will go over how to set up emails later on in the video, so hang tight for that part as well. Now swiping down again, you'll see other type of applications here. For example, if someone sends you a text message, um, if you have Facebook on your phone, you'll get all your Facebook notifications all in this section as well. It all depends on what applications you choose to download on the phone, they will all show up here as new information is being uh, notified to you. Now at the top here, you'll see these little switches. These are called notification. These switches are all shortcuts to different settings for the phone. So they've taken all the most important items from the settings and they've just given you a quick little button to turn them on, on and off. So for example, if you'd like to connect to your home Wi-Fi, you need to make sure this is lit up. This is your Wi-Fi icon. Now if I tap on it and, it and it goes gray, guess what? Now that means my Wi-Fi is turned off. If I tap it again, guess what? It's blue and Wi-Fi is now turned on again. The next button here is your volume button. Now this is the button you'll use to control the volume on the phone. So for example, the way you see it now, this means that your, your volume is up. And if I tap it one time, it's gonna put a slash over the icon. And that means your phone is now in vibrate. Tap it again. 
If you notice it's gray now, that means your phone is on silent, so it will not make any noise. And if I tap it again, it will turn that volume right back up. So that's how you control the volume on the phone. You'll also have Bluetooth, screen rotation, your airplane mode, and your flashlight. If you'd like to turn on your flashlight, you tap on this little icon here. And now we have our flashlight. It'll use the phone's flash as a flashlight. Now these are only a few of the switches that are available. By swiping down from the top of the screen again, you will have a list of even more shortcuts. I wanna show you that one more time. Swipe down once, swipe again, and here you'll see some other options. So your hotspot, for example, swipe to the left, you'll have a dark mode. This will change all your menus to dark and give you a nice uh, cleaner look. And now if you notice the whole section is dark and these are just some of the other uh, switches that are available. So those are your notification switches. Okay, next quickly I wanna go over how to turn your phone on and off. Now you can hold down on the power button. If you hold it for about two seconds, it will take you to this screen here, which will allow you to power off, restart, or turn on the emergency mode. You can also swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down one more time, and you will have this little button here. This is also your shortcut to the power button that will take you to that same power menu. So if you need to restart your phone, if you notice it's running a bit slow or having some issues, or you just wanna turn it off, that's how you do it. In this section, we're gonna go over how to download applications. Now, applications are all gonna be downloaded in the Play Store. Now, we have it on our home screen here. If you don't see it on your home screen, just swipe up and you should have it in your app drawer section. Tap on Play Store. Now, one important note, um, if you have not signed into a Google account yet on your phone, you probably don't see this on the screen you may see a white screen that's asking you to sign in to a Gmail account. One important note, you do need a Gmail or Google account in order to download applications on the phone. So on your screen, just quickly, for those of you that have not signed into a Gmail yet, in the bottom left corner, you should see a button that says create account. If you don't have a Gmail or if you had one and you forgot the information, just come down to create set up a new Gmail account. It'll take two minutes, and once that's finished, it'll take you to this screen where you'll be able to download applications. Now, I'm gonna show you quickly how to navigate this Play Store because there's a lot in here, and I'll show you my little shortcut to download apps very quickly. So, at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see categories, so games, for those of you looking for different games, at the top here you'll see different categories. So top charts, kids, events, new, premium, categories. Best to go to categories and then you can see these are the, the different themes that the games are broken up into. So you can find you know, the particular game that you might be looking for. You also have, so games, you have apps, you have um, movies, you can download movies from the store as well. You can rent, you can buy, you can also download books as well. Now let's go back to games and we're in the categories. I'm gonna go up to puzzle and let's say you wanna download Tetris. We can tap on the app here. Now. This green button here says install. If you ever see install on that green button, that means that it is a free game to play and a free game to download. So I can simply tap on the green button here and it will begin to download the game to the phone. Now, if that green box had a price in it, if it said $1, $5, $10, that's it telling you that this is not a free game. There is a fee 
So you need to decide, do you want to pay for that or do you want to try to look for a free version? That is up to you. You'll see right here, it's giving you a status of uh, how the download is going and, and what percent it has to go. So this app is downloading, that's great. Now guess what, I'm gonna use my back button because I wanna go back one screen just like that. I'm gonna press it again and press it one more time. And if you notice, that back button is just taking us back one step, one step, one step. So a very useful button to use. Now, let's say there's a specific application you're trying to download. Here, like rather than trying to search through and find it, all you have to do is do a search. And you can type, so I can go to the top of the screen in this box and tap in the box and I can type in the name of the app that I'm trying to find manually or I can simply tap on the microphone and I can just say it like this. DoorDash. So just like that, if you know the application you'd like to download, just hit that microphone, say it, and it should take you right to that application. And now, guess what? I'm gonna tap on that green button that says install, and it will begin to download DoorDash to the phone, just like that. I'm gonna tap on the home button now, and I'm gonna swipe up, and this is the app section. Now, I don't see those two apps I just downloaded. Where are they? Well. There's more than one page. We're just gonna swipe over and there it is. This is our Tetris game that we just downloaded. And oh, there's our DoorDash game. And there it is. Now we can easily do our DoorDash and have some fun ordering food for the house. So that's how you download an application. That's the basic process. Now, if you notice, that app is in the uh, app drawer, but it's not on my home screen. Now you may want to move it so you can have it on the front of your phone. To do that, you're gonna swipe up and you're gonna hold down, just take your finger and just gently press on the app for one second. And if you notice, after one second, it took us right to the home screen. And guess what? I'm gonna lift my finger and there it is. Now my app is on the home screen. Let's do it again for DoorDash. Take your finger, gentle press on the app and just keep it there. One 1,000, two 1,000. We're on the home screen. I'm gonna move it to the right and pick up my finger and there it is. And it's just that easy to download an app and move it right to your home screen. In the next section, we're going over how to send text messages. Now at the bottom of the screen, you will have this little blue icon. Now this is your text messaging app, and we're gonna use that to send and receive messages. So tap on the blue icon there. In the bottom right corner, you'll see a little blue bubble. Tap on the bubble, and now we're gonna either type in the phone number of the person that we want to message, or we can enter a name if you've already saved someone as a contact. And you know what? After we go over text messages, we're gonna go over how to save a contact to your phone so that it'll be easier for you to send messages and make calls later. So I'm gonna enter a phone number here. And I've entered my phone number. And guess what? I can actually save this number as a contact if I wanted to right now by hitting the plus right next to the number at the bottom here. I'm gonna wait, but I'm just telling you if you wanted to save that number, you would just hit the plus and that would let you save that number in your contacts. Now what I'm gonna do is on the keyboard, come down to the bottom right corner and hit next. And so my number is in and now you notice the cursor right next to enter message is flashing. So I'm gonna type in my message. Happy Monday. So I'm typing my message. Now guess what? Some of you guys may not want to type. And guess what? There's a shortcut for this too. So if you tap on the three dots in the upper right, right here, or excuse me, not the three dots. We're gonna tap 
So this is actually what I was looking for, this row here. So this little row has a microphone on it. And when you tap the microphone, guess what? I can just say what I wanna type and it will type it for me just like this. I hope you're having a great day. When you're finished, just tap on the microphone. Now it recorded a little extra that it wanted to record so I can use this to back up and take some of those words out. And when you're finished, you can hit the back button right here and there's our message. Now I can send that message right now or I can tap on the little arrow here and I can hit this first icon here to attach a picture I've already taken on the phone. So just to show you what it looks like, I can attach this picture. So now along with my message will go a picture or I can take a picture right now and add it to it by tapping on the camera. So I'm gonna hit take a picture. I'm gonna point it, hit the little white button here to take the picture. And now I can hit okay. And now it's gonna attach these two pictures to my message. That's how you send a picture in your message. And then hit this button, which is the send button and it's gonna send off our message. And that's it. That's how you send a text message. I'm gonna hit my back button now because I've finished sending this message and I wanna go back and see if I have any other messages. So I'm gonna hit the back button, hit it again. And this is the main page of the messages app. And if I wanna send a message to my friend Joe the third, I can just tap on this message and I can begin typing a message to this person. So you'll see the cursor, you'll say, hey, where's my keyboard? If you ever wanna bring up the keyboard, you have to tap in a section where you can type. So watch this, there we go. And there's our keyboard. Now I can begin typing my message to Joe. So that's how you send a text message and a picture. In this section, we're gonna go over how to save a phone number to your contacts. So when that person calls you or sends you a text message, it will have their name pop up instead of just a phone number. So the easiest way to do this is to go to the phone app, make sure you're on the keypad, and type in the phone number you would like to save. So I wanna save this number to my phone. So I just typed in the phone number and at the top of the screen, there's a little plus. Tap on the plus. Try again, I think I missed the plus. Hit the plus and it will ask you, do you wanna create a new contact or update an existing? So you would use in most cases, create new contact. However, if a friend of yours has gotten a new number, then you would wanna use update existing and it would let you go to a contact you've already saved and then you can simply add that number to that contact. In this case, we're gonna hit create new contact. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save that contact. I encourage you always save it to your Gmail so I'm gonna tap Google, because if you save it to the phone or you save it to the SIM card and you lose the phone, guess what? You lose all the contacts with the phone. This way, the phone number is gonna be backed up to my Gmail account. That's why I always um, select the Google option. Now I'm just gonna type a name, Edward Jones. And then I can go down here and I can add an email address, a second phone number. I can hit view more and have all these other options I can add. So an email address, uh, an address, any important notes, websites, messenger contacts. I can hit ringtone and I can save a special ringtone sound. So when that person calls, it'll play a certain song. So you can do a lot. When you're finished, hit save and that will save that person's number in your phone.
And that's how we save a contact. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to make the font bigger so you can see the words better in the event the words are too small for you. So we're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, tap on this little wheel. There we go. We're gonna swipe up to display. And then we're gonna go to font, size, and style. And here you have a few options. First, you can make the font bold. That'll make it easier to read things. Now look up here, you're gonna see this text get, get larger as we're making adjustments. So that's how you'll know that things are changing. So this is the current font size right now. This is two away from the left. As I drag this over, it's gonna make the font bigger. See that? You notice how this is getting bigger. So I would say maybe go to, the, to about this size and then go home and go to your messages and you can see what that looks like. Let's see. You notice the words are bigger, the letters are bigger, everything is bigger. If you like that, great. You can always hit recent apps here, go back to the settings and you can make it even larger if you need it to be bigger. But that's how you increase the size of the font. Now that should increase across just about all the applications on the phone, FYI. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to sign into your email account so you can get your emails on the phone. Now, to do this, you wanna go to the Google folder on the home screen here, and we're gonna tap on Gmail. Now you might say to yourself, I don't have a Gmail. I have an AOL or a Yahoo or an SPC Global. Well, it doesn't matter. The Google account allows you to sign into other email accounts uh, aside from Google. So what it's gonna look like when you go to that app is this. This is the first thing you will see when you go to the Gmail app. So you have some options here. You can tap on Google if you're trying to sign into another Google account. Obviously you would select Outlook, Hotmail Live, Yahoo. Depending on the type of email account, you select the appropriate option. However, what if you don't see the email type that you have on the screen? For example, what if you have an AOL email account? Well, that option is not listed. So I'm gonna show you a trick on what you'll need to do if you have an email account type that is not listed on the screen here. Hit the home button. We're gonna to go to the Play Store and I'm gonna hit that back button so I can get out of this. I wanna be on the main screen of the Play Store. Now where it says search for apps, we're gonna just tap in the box and we're gonna type in the at symbol, so in the bottom left corner, tap on the little symbols icon and tap on the at symbol and then tap ABC and we're gonna go AOL.com and we're gonna hit the search and here it is. So uh, after our search, it's brought up the AOL app. So if you install this application, you can then sign into your AOL email and you can get all your AOL emails through here. Now, maybe you don't have AOL. Maybe you have a different type of email account. Same thing applies, just tap in the box and you'll wanna just, after the at symbol, type in the type of email account that you have, like an sbcglobal.net, and then it will recommend applications that will work with that email type. So the Yahoo Mail app will work with it, my at and or the Samsung email application will also work with that. So download it, and then you should be able to sign in using that email app, okay? The first thing you'll wanna do is increase your screen timeout time. If you notice, the screen goes dim very quickly, 
So if you want to increase that time so your screen stays on longer, what you'll want to do is swipe down from the top of the screen and in the upper right corner, this is where you'll find your settings wheel. Tap on the settings wheel. From here, we're going to go to display and then we're going to swipe up until we get to screen timeout. And we're going to change it from 30 seconds to either two minutes or five minutes. I usually like two minutes, um, but five is good as well. This way your screen will stay on longer without you having to constantly touch the screen. So really important tweak there and, you know, help from driving you crazy from the screen going dim so quickly. Now moving on to our next tip, I'm going to show you how to connect to Wi-Fi. So you'll want to swipe down from the top of the screen and in the left corner, you'll find this switch. This is called a notification switch and it's just a shortcut to some of the different uh, settings that are most important. So to turn on Wi-Fi, you'll want to tap on this little symbol right here. And once it's blue, that means that your Wi-Fi is on. And next you'll need to find your Wi-Fi network or the network you'd like to connect to. As an example, um, at your house or someone else's house, they'll have a name for their Wi-Fi network and you look for that name. Um, but like if you were out at a Starbucks or a Denny's, you know, it would probably just say Denny's or Starbucks. So you just want to look for whatever the network name is to connect. And here I'm going to connect to this one here. And then I'll need to enter the password so I can connect. So let me do that right now. So once you put the password in, we're going to tap connect and give it a few seconds. And after that, we are all set. However, if you enter the wrong password, it'll keep you on that same screen and it should have a pop up that's going to say wrong password. Please enter it again. Um, so just as a note, in case you still see that you'll notice now in the upper right corner that now I have this Wi-Fi symbol here that's telling me I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. So now we're good to go. Next, I'm going to go over how to change your wallpaper so you can change the picture on the back of the phone. Now to do this, you're going to hold down on the home screen and then tap on wallpapers. And every phone will come with a few preloaded wallpapers. And then you can also take a picture and make that your wallpaper as well. Uh, for this case, I'm going to tap my wallpapers and I can see these are a few of the different preloaded options. So I can either select one of these, like I can just tap this here and it'll ask me, do I want to make it the home wallpaper or the lock screen? The lock screen is when you turn the phone off and then you turn it back on that first picture you see. So you can decide which wallpaper you want to go where I'm going to make it the home screen. It'll show you what it's going to look like first and then tap set on home screen and home screen applied. Tap your home button here and there is our wallpaper. Now, next, I want to show you how to take a picture and make that picture your wallpaper picture. So hold down on the home screen, tap on wallpapers and this time tap on gallery. And actually I have no pictures currently saved. So you know what I need to do? I'll need to go and take a picture. Now for you guys who have transferred pictures from an older phone, this is where all your older pictures will show up and you can select an older picture that you already have taken as an option. But in this case, I'm going to go home, tapping the home button and then tap on the camera. And I'm just going to point and take a quick picture right now. Hit this little white button to take the picture, tap the home button. And now I'm going to go back to the wallpaper setting. So holding down on the home screen, tap on wallpapers, tap on gallery. And there's my picture. I'm going to tap on it and then tap done. Tap home screen. That's what it'll look like. And then I'll hit set on home screen. And after a few seconds, here we go. Tap the home button and there's my new wallpaper. So that's how you take a picture and select it to make it your wallpaper. Now, next, I want to take you into the galaxy store right here on the home screen. You should see it. If you don't see this here, you're going to swipe up 
and the Galaxy Store should be here. This is where all the apps are that are on your phone. Tap on Galaxy Store. So one important thing to note is that Samsung used to install a lot of their own apps on their phones. And over the years, they've installed less and less to save space. So you'll wanna go to the Galaxy App Store and just type in Samsung and you can get to all of their custom apps and you can select which ones would be most important for you to have on your phone. So I typed in Samsung, I'm gonna hit the search in the bottom right corner. And a few apps I would encourage you to download, one would be Samsung Music. So if you have music you transferred from an older phone, you can listen to them using Samsung Music. So tap on the little arrow going down and that will download that app to the phone. Samsung has a health app, which is great for keeping track of your steps and tracking your water and your food calories, a bunch of things just like that. So we'll tap the little down arrow to download that. If you haven't already transferred all of your files from uh, an older phone, like pictures, videos, text messages, wallpapers, your call log, you can do it using the Samsung Smart Switch app. And we're gonna just tap on the down arrow to download that app. That's how you transfer your files from an older phone using the Samsung Smart Switch app. Now, as we swipe up, a few more important apps. Uh, Samsung email is a good app. Now you can also use the Gmail app to sign into your email. I'm gonna go over later on in the video how to sign into your different email accounts, but um, Samsung has their own email app as well, just FYI. Next, we're gonna go over how to set up your fingerprints so you can unlock your phone using your finger. The first thing you'll need to do is swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel and we're going to swipe all the way up until we get to biometrics and security. Now, um, you can program the phone to unlock with a fingerprint or with your face. If you'd like to use the face recognition, you can simply tap the first option here. You can program it to your face, and then when you hold the phone up, it'll automatically unlock when the phone recognizes your face. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate the process for the fingerprints um, because it's a little more involved. Tap on fingerprints, continue. And the first thing it will ask you to do is to select a backup, pin, password, or pattern. And this will work in the event that your uh, fingerprint sensor stops working or for whatever reason you can't unlock the phone using your finger, you will always have a backup method. So in this case, I'm going to select a pin and I'm just gonna use four zeros, continue and then four zeros. You should obviously select some, some combination of numbers that's more secure, FYI. Next, we're gonna take the phone, we're gonna tilt it and just begin to tap the sensor. And you wanna to try to move your finger different ways as you lift it up and down over the sensor so that it really learns your finger. The goal is that when you pick up the phone, it feels very natural. You just tap the button and it will automatically unlock. So we're almost done. One recommendation I have is always program more than one finger just because um, the finger you normally use could be oily from something you're eating. Um, you could have just washed it. Um, for whatever reason, something could happen and it's always good to have a backup fingerprint on file. So tap the add button and select another finger you would like to program. And I would recommend it be a finger on a different hand. So if you were to take the phone and hold it with your left hand, you might make your middle finger or pointer finger the other uh, finger that is programmed to unlock the phone. Okay, next we're gonna hit done tap agree and then it will ask you to sign into your Samsung account now if you don't have one don't worry um, I do encourage you to set up one because it does unlock additional features and customizations on the phone and it doesn't cost you anything it is totally free so if you want to set up one tap the create account button here if you already have one you can tap the box for email or phone number and enter your sign information 
Or if you're like me, who already has one set up and it's linked to your Google account, you can simply tap continue with Google and then you can tap um, the, your Google account and then it will use that to sign you in. Now, sometimes it will ask you to send a one-time pin. So whatever phone number you have on file with your Samsung account, it might send you a text message asking you to verify your account. So just look out for that six digit number and enter it on the screen and then it should sign you into your account. Now, uh, a few other cool things you can do with the fingerprint sensor is you can use it to sign into uh, websites that have passwords by simply enabling this option here. You can also use it um, for other Samsung related account options by turning this feature on too. And it will ask you to put your uh, password in first for that. And that's it. The fingerprint sensor is officially set up. Now, if I turn the phone off, um, I don't even have to wake up the phone. I can just simply put my finger on the button and it will automatically unlock the phone. Pretty cool. Now, the very last thing I want to show you is something that's going to help a lot of you out. Um, and it's a tweak for your home screen. So hold down the home screen, tap on settings, and come down to the option that says lock home screen layout. Now, by enabling lock home screen layout, this will stop apps from being moved on the home screen. So for example, if I, if I try to move this messages app here, I can't because the screen is locked. So once you have your phone set up and you have all the apps that you would like on the home screen, you'll wanna go and enable that feature. Again, hold the home screen, tap settings and lock home screen layout. By doing that, it will make it so none of your apps are going to move on the home screen. Now, as I turn it off, guess what? Now I can move this by simply holding down on it for one second and then dragging it up just like this. Now, some of you have been a victim of this. You set your home screen up, you put certain apps in certain places, and then you might give your phone to someone else or to a kid or your phone is all in your pocket and all of a sudden everything gets shifted around and you can't find anything. So I encourage you set your home screen up the way you like it and then lock the screen. And you might find that you have an app like OneDrive that you might say, I'm never going to use that. Well, hold down on it. It's going to give you a list of options and you can remove it from the home screen by just tapping the little trash can. And there it is, it's gone. And now you can swipe up and say, hey, you know what? I would love to have my calculator on the home screen because I use calculation calculators a lot. Hold down on it, drag it down and let it go. And now you'll be able to move the calculator in that spot. I'm gonna drag my Google Chrome icon here and one last thing I love to do is to move my settings wheel on the home screen as well. So just hold down on it, drag it down, let it go. And that's how I want to set up my home screen. Now I can hold down on the home screen, go to settings and I can lock the layout. So now none of my apps can be moved and that's it. The first tip I want to show you is how to run two apps at one time. So what you'll need to do is first decide what two apps do you want to run. In this case, I want to run YouTube and I also want to run Google Chrome. I want to be on a website searching while I'm watching a YouTube video. So I'm going to go to the YouTube app, tap on YouTube and find a video to play. And I already have a video queued up here. So um, leave this here. Now I'm gonna tap the home button and then I'm gonna find the second app that I'd like to open, which is Google Chrome, Oh, which is right here. Open it first, go home. And now I wanna tap the recent apps button right here, swipe over and right above YouTube, you'll see the YouTube icon. Tap on the icon and hit open in split screen view. 
And then I'm going to select Chrome at the bottom here so I can have Chrome at the bottom and YouTube at the top. Now guess what? You don't have to do Chrome. You could have your text messages open at the bottom. You can also swipe through here and select a different app to have open while YouTube is playing. And one important thing to know, any app that you see as you swipe down is going to be compatible with the split screen view. Um, there are some apps that do not support this function. One big app being Instagram, so just an FYI. Um, most apps work, but not all apps work. Okay, so I'm gonna tap Google Chrome, and now that I have both apps open, I'm going to play my video and tap on this little button in the right corner here to make sure the video is in full screen mode. And while my video plays, I can scroll through the Disney website and see what new deals they have and what prices, all while listening and watching my video. I can also take my phone and tilt it and it will rotate sideways so that I can continue to watch the video in the portrait mode while I scroll through the website here. Now, if you tap in the center where you see these three dots, I can tap this button here and I can switch it and have the video move to the right and the website move to the left. I can also take my finger and put it on the three dots and drag the screen to the left to get out of the split screen and back into the full screen mode. And that's it. That's how you run two apps at one time. Now you'll notice when you're in full screen mode with your video, you won't see your home, back, or recent apps button. No problem, you just need to swipe up and then tap your home button to get back to the home screen. And oh, look at that, another little hidden tip. So while the video is playing, if you tap the home button, it will shrink the video into what is called a pop-out video that I can then move to different sections of the phone. I can put it in any one of the four corners or in the center, and I can continue to use the phone to do other things. So very cool way to work the multitasking element. Now, let me show you a little bit more on how that works really quickly. So, if you have YouTube open and the video is playing, you can hit the home button and that will put it in this little pop-out video. However, if the video is paused and you tap the home button, guess what? It's gonna go away. So that's just the difference in how that works. Okay, moving on. Next, I wanna show you how to watch TV for free on your phone. Whoa, that's crazy, that's right. Samsung has a really cool TV service that they offer with the phone where you can watch uh, a list of channels for free. Now, to do this, you, we do have to do a few setting tweaks. So the first thing you wanna do is hold down the home screen. Oh, make sure you're not touching anything specific, but hold down the home screen, swipe to the right, and you'll wanna switch this from Google Discover to Samsung Free, and that's their TV service. Next, we're gonna hit the home button. And now when, you, now when you swipe right on the home screen, it will take you right to their Samsung TV Plus. And they have a few disclaimers here. The only one you actually have to select is the first option. So just select that, hit agree. And now you can begin to watch TV for free on your phone. There are ads, but hey, free is free. You can tap on new channels, featured, or you can just swipe through to look at different um, themes. So sports, kids, comedy. One of my favorite channels I watch all the time is the Wild and Out channel. You can go through here and you can literally watch Wild and Out 24 hours a day, which is awesome. One of my favorite shows. Um, not sure where that channel is, but I know it's in here for sure. So just swipe through. And as you go to different categories, you can see what channels they offer for free. Boom. Free TV, aren't you glad you picked a Samsung phone? I sure am happy I have one. All right, moving on. Our next hidden feature is gonna be how to launch your camera from any screen, no matter what's going on. Let's say your phone is off, 
and something exciting is happening and you want to snap a picture of it or start recording a video, all you're going to do is tap the power button twice. It'll automatically wake up your phone and take you right to the camera. Even if you have a password, it'll bypass it and take you right to the camera, just like that. Now, this will also work if your phone is unlocked and maybe you're in a different app doing something else. Let's say, for example, you are um, in Google Chrome searching a website. Doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing, hit the power button two times. It'll automatically take you out of that app and right into the camera so you can begin recording your pictures or your videos. Isn't that awesome? That is called the quick launch camera. Now, let's say you say to yourself, hey, that's a cool feature, but you know what? I don't take a lot of pictures. I don't really care for that. I sure wish I could change that double tap function to launch something else. Well, guess what? You can. By swiping down from the top of the screen and swiping down a second time, you can tap on the power button at the top of the screen. That'll take you to this setting. And in this settings menu, tap on side key settings. And here I can change the double press option from launching the camera to opening a specific app. Maybe you say, I'd much rather be able to launch my flashlight by hitting that double tap. Well, guess what? You can tap on the flashlight, hit the home button, and now you get home and there's no lights on in the house, simply double tap your power button and guess what? Your flashlight is gonna now come on and help light up your house. That is pretty cool. All right, moving on to our next tip. I wanna show you the Samsung Kids Mode. That's right. Many of you probably didn't even know this phone has a Kids Mode feature. It just happens to be buried in the settings and you just need to know where to look to find it and activate it. Well. Let's talk about it. So swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, swipe to your left, and you'll wanna tap on this little plus, and then swipe to your left. Well, before we do that, I just wanna show you some of the other things that are here. So you have an NFT switch, live transcribe, bedtime mode, focus mode, which is great for when you're trying to get work done and you don't want your phone to have be going off with a bunch of notifications, that's focus mode, secure mode where you can hide things away on your phone where people have to use a password to get into, and swipe left, kids mode. So tap on, well actually we're gonna hold down on kids and drag it down here. So now it's gonna be a quick shortcut. Every time you swipe down from the top of the screen, you're gonna have this kids mode shortcut. Tap on kids. And this will take you right to the kids mode section. And here you can download these different apps that are um, kid friendly applications that will allow your kids to use your phone and be busy without messing up or seeing any of your personal items on the phone. So um, you'll wanna go in and just tap the little download arrow next to each app and then you can pass your phone to your kids. They can use the camera to take pictures or videos and enjoy all these other fun, kid-friendly, safe apps. And guess what? They can't get out of this section unless they have your unlock pin. So they will be locked in this section. And if they try to get out, they're gonna be prompted to enter a pin, okay? So let's enter our pin and voila, we're out of kids mode. So how do we get back there again? Swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down and swipe to your left and there is the kids mode shortcut. Now you can give your phone to your kids without any fear that they're going to call someone or text someone or see something they're not supposed to see. All right, moving on to our next tip. We're gonna show you how to enable the one-handed mode so you can use the phone easily with one hand. What you're going to do, swipe down from the top of the screen in the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, 
and we're gonna swipe up to advanced features. From here, we're then gonna go down to one-handed mode and we're just going to turn it on and then tap and switch it from gesture to button. And now you can launch the one-handed mode very easily by simply hitting the home button two times, just like this. This will shrink the screen down and make it so you can easily reach the top of the screen with one finger or one hand versus having to reach all the way up to the top of the phone. Again, two taps on the home button and that's what launches the one-handed mode. You can hit the arrow here to switch the side in case you're left-handed and tap in this gray area on the outside to get out of one-handed mode. And that's it. Making the phone easy for anyone to use. Now, moving on to our next tip, I wanna show you a cool little tweak to make in the settings that's gonna make it a bit easier to see when you have text messages come through or other notifications. This is called floating notifications. What we're gonna do is swipe down from the top of the screen, so, uh, excuse me, tap the settings wheel, go back to advanced features and swipe up and tap at the bottom on floating notifications and switch it from off to smart pop-up and then under included apps, tap here. And I would say definitely do it for text messages and maybe another app that you use pretty frequently. Um, for now, I think messages is the main app I would like to use for this function. We're gonna then tap the home button and I have this set up on another phone so you can see. This is a phone that just received a message, a text message, and it's gonna show up in a little pop-up that looks just like this. So I can just tap on it, and then I can easily see the message right here. I can even tap in the box, and I can respond to the message if I would like. Maybe you just wanna see it and say, oh, I'll respond later. Hit the home button, and the message goes away, but it stays on the screen as a pop-up, which is what I like, because it will remind me later to respond to that message. So that is the floating notifications tweak that just makes it easier to see your messages as they come through and remember to respond to them later. Now, we're gonna go back again to our settings to enable another feature that just makes it easier to wake up your phone when it is on a table. We wanna come down to advanced features and from here, we want to swipe up. We want to tap on motions and gestures and enable double tap to turn on screen. Now, tap the home button. We're gonna turn off the screen. And let's say your phone is sitting on a table and you wanna go up to it and simply check the time you're gonna just tap the screen two times and that will automatically wake up the screen so you can check the phone and then allow you to also swipe to unlock the phone. Now, super cool feature, super quick. We're gonna go back to that same menu again and also enable keep screen on while viewing. And this is a really cool feature that will basically use the front sensor to see if you're still reading something on the screen and it will keep the screen on longer than the normal time as long as it can still recognize your face. This is a great feature, again, if you like to read on your phone and you don't wanna to have to touch the screen every two minutes to keep it on, this will keep it on as long as it can detect your face in the front camera and that is keep screen on while viewing. All right, moving on to one of um, our favorite topics that a lot of people always ask for, how to hide apps. That's right, maybe you have an app that you don't want people to have access to. Let me show you how to hide it when you're not using it so no one can get to it. So, we're going to hold down the home screen 
go to widgets, excuse me, not widgets. We're going to go to settings and we're going to go to hide apps. Now let's go through our list here and let's find an app that we would like to hide. Maybe you say, I really want to hide mm, the YouTube app. I don't know why. I'm just picking that one as a random example. So I'm just going to check the box next to YouTube and it's going to now go into the hidden app section. I'm going to hit done, hit the home button. And now as I swipe up, you'll notice the YouTube app is completely gone. It's not in the Google folder. It's nowhere. It's totally gone. Now, if you want to get it back, no problem. Just simply hold down the home screen, go back to settings, tap hide apps. There's going to be a little minus in the upper left corner of the YouTube app. I'm just going to tap that. That will take it out of the hidden section. We're going to hit done, the home button. And as we swipe up and to our left, YouTube is back. So that is a super easy way to hide apps on your phone. And guess what? No one will even know they're there. They would have to know to go all the way to hide apps to unhide them. Boom. For our next tip, we're going to show you how to customize your phone using the Samsung theme store. That's right. You have a theme store that is built into your phone and let me show you how to get to it. Hold down your home screen. And at the bottom here, the second option is themes. Tap on themes. And here you'll have three different categories, themes, wallpapers, and icons. So the difference between a theme and a wallpaper is that a wallpaper is just uh, downloading a picture that will go on the background of your phone. And the icons, well, those are the different icons like your phone app, your email app, your text messaging app. You can download these different theme packs that will change what the icons look like. Just like that. Now this one is cool because it's like a uh, Apple themed um, pack of wallpaper. So that's kind of cool. But for a theme, themes change everything in one swoop. Let's say you liked, um, let's try this theme here. We'll go to Indie Designers and we'll go to this theme right here. So this is going to change everything from the background of your phone, the icons, the uh, calling app, the text messaging app, it's going to change everything. Now I, I encourage you to look through all the pictures first and make sure you like it before you spend your money. You can also tap the download trial button and you can download that theme for 10 minutes to try it out and see if you like it. Let's tap and look at some of the pictures. So this is what your home screen will look like. Your lock screen, the dialer, text messages, your notification panel, it literally changes everything. Everything is going to look different. So just remember themes change everything. Wallpaper is just the background of the phone. Icons are just the icons. One cool tip within this section, always try to see what's free first before you pay for one. That's just my opinion. So to get to the free themes first, switch from featured to top. Tap on the arrow, go down to free, and then it will give you a list of all the free themes that you can try out first. So I always say go through and try the free ones first. You may not need to pay for one if you find a cool free one you like. Okay. And that is the Samsung theme store, which will change the total look of your phone. Now, next I want to show you how to launch your Google assistant. Now the assistant is, uh, it lives in the home button. So all you need to do is simply hold down on the home button for two seconds. It will launch your Google assistant and then you can ask it to do anything. So, um, this is what it looks like. There you go. And as you begin to talk, it will listen and try to identify what you're asking. So 
The top three things I normally will ask the Google Assistant is, hey, set my alarm for 8 a.m. Um, what's the weather like today? Or what time is the so-and-so basketball game? Or what's the score of such and such basketball game? Let me show you quickly how it works. Set a timer for 10 minutes. There you go. And usually it'll say setting timer, got it. You can tap view timers as well if you wanna see if it actually worked or you wanna go in and change it. So I don't use the Google Assistant a ton, but I do love using it to set alarms because I think that's one of the things I use, I do you know, pretty frequently is setting alarms. So it's much faster to just say set alarm for this day, this time than having to find the clock app and go to alarm and set it manually. So that's a really cool thing to use it for. Or if I know I have a work call in an hour, I'll say set an alarm for 50 minutes. So my phone will automatically remind me 10 minutes before the call. So that's how you use the Google Assistant. There's so many things you can ask but I keep it to really those three things, weather, timers, and sports. All right, our next tip is I wanna show you how to get more apps on your home screen. So right now, we have four apps going across and I think five going up. If you hold down the home screen and tap on home screen settings, you can go to home screen grid and you can change it to add more rows or more columns. So four by six, five by five, five by six. Now this will make more room to add more apps or widgets on your home screen. So really cool tweak there. For those of you that like to have a lot of apps on your screen, you're gonna love that. Now, for our last tip, I wanna show you how to change your lock screen shortcuts. These are the lock screen shortcuts. You have a shortcut to the phone and the camera that you simply put your finger on and drag and it takes you right to that particular app. Well, you can change it. You might say, I don't want the phone here. I don't want the camera here. I know I can just double tap the power button to get to the camera. I'd like to put something more useful there. Well, let me show you how to do that. We're gonna swipe down, tap on the settings wheel, we wanna to go to lock screen and then go down to shortcuts and change the left shortcut from the phone to maybe you say, you know, I'd much rather have my um, alarms there and on the right, I'd much rather have my Gmail app and there it is. In fact, let's change the left to Google Maps because maybe you just drive around a lot. Let's turn off the phone, turn it back on. And now we have our Google Maps on the left and our Gmail on the right. You how to mirror your Samsung Galaxy screen to your TV. Now, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this on multiple devices. So we're gonna go over this if you have a Chromecast, a Roku, a Fire Stick TV, or a smart TV. I'm gonna show you how to do it on all these different devices. The video will be broken down into sections, so feel free to just fast forward to the section that is relevant to the device that you have. Now, I'm gonna show how to uh, play a video from your phone to your TV using each one of those devices, and then I will also show how to mirror your screen, and so when you mirror, it's showing everything that's on your phone for example, if you're playing a game, it'll show the entire game uh, on the TV, or if you're trying to demonstrate a process of how to do something on your phone, it will completely show everything that's happening on your phone on the TV. Now, for the mirroring, that is only available using the Chromecast, but in terms of sending a video from your phone to the TV, you can do that with any one of those four devices I've mentioned. So, um, just want to give you a kind of a brief overview of what the video is going to cover and let's go ahead and jump in and we're going to start with the Chromecast. Okay, so if you have a Chromecast, here's what you need first to make this work. So you will need uh, an HDTV with an HDMI connection. 
Second, you will need a Chromecast device. And third, you will need home Wi-Fi for this. Um, the Chromecast connects to a Wi-Fi network and on the phone, we're gonna make sure we are on Wi-Fi because we're gonna have to connect to that device using Wi-Fi. So uh, one important thing to note, all the processes won't need Wi-Fi, but for this particular, um, using the Chromecast, you will need Wi-Fi. So FYI for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the process, how we get started. So first on your phone, make sure you swipe down from the top and just confirm that you are connected, your Wi-Fi is turned on and you are connected to it. So as you can see, my Wi-Fi icon is blue. That means my Wi-Fi is on and you should see a Wi-Fi icon in the corner that tells you you're connected to your Wi-Fi network. That's the first thing. Next, we're gonna go to the Play Store and we're gonna do a search for the app Google Home and I have it up right here. I've already installed it. I'm just gonna tap the open button to walk us through the setup and get us to the process of mirroring. So first I'm gonna show you how to mirror, which is, again, mirroring is showing everything that's happening on your phone on the TV. And then after I will show just playing a video from your phone to the TV. So here I'm gonna hit the get started button. Um, press OK. You will need to be signed into a Google account. So just uh, if you're not installed, if you're not signed to a Google account, go ahead and sign into that. We're going to hit next here. You're going to uh, allow device location. I'm going to hit only this time because it needs that for the initial setup. And let's see, let's go ahead and skip this. Not important. Okay, so now that we're on the main screen here, I'm gonna slide the phone over so we can get ready to mirror our screen. Let's put the phone right there. Next, we're going to swipe up where it says other cast devices and I'm gonna tap on Chromecast and my Chromecast is named Chromecast 6871. Tap here and at the bottom of the screen, it'll say cast my screen. Tap on there, press cast screen start now and you can see now we are connected and anything I do on the phone is going to be mirrored to the TV so I'm just going to tap the home button here and now as I move around the screen you'll see it's going to show everything I'm doing on the TV now this will uh, support portrait and landscape so if I open an app that allows me to rotate the phone in the landscape position um, it will rotate with me. So for example, I can turn the phone like this and now you'll see it'll show in the full screen. So that's just an FYI. At this point, you can do anything. You can um, open up an app that you'd like to play. You can uh, show pictures or videos from a trip, whatever. Just know that everything you're doing on the phone is gonna show up on the TV. Now, when you're finished with this setup and you'd like to turn off it from mirroring, you're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen and here you'll see an option that says cast and then under it'll say casting screen. To the right, there is a little uh, microphone and arrow. We're gonna tap, I know it's kinda hard to see. Tap on the arrow and tap disconnect and that's gonna stop the phone from mirroring your screen to the TV. So that's how to mirror your screen. Next, we're gonna go over how do I just play a video like from YouTube or Netflix or Hulu, how do I just play that on the TV? So I'm gonna go to YouTube here. Let's find our YouTube app and I'm gonna demonstrate that easy process. It's, it's super easy for a video that's on the phone or on an app. So let's go to YouTube and let's find a video to play and we'll find one of my great videos here. Let's say I wanna play um, this video here. So the video has started to play. What I'm gonna do is pause it first and at the top of the video here, you can see there's this little icon. This is your cast icon. Tap on that icon and I'm going to tap Chromecast 6871 and that will begin connecting to the device 
and you'll see on the TV, you'll see um, YouTube is loading and the video should begin to play. Now you can control the volume from the phone. So as you raise the volume up and down on the phone, it will control the TV volume. So that's cool. Now guess what? The best part about this is I can now hit the home button. That video is gonna keep playing on the screen. And guess what? I can now do whatever I want on the phone. I can go to my text messages and I can have my text conversation going. I can do other things on the phone because I've really just sent the video to the TV using the Chromecast, but my phone is still fully operational. And that's why this is my favorite way to kind of mirror a video. I, I don't want to mirror the whole screen because I want to be able to use my phone while I'm watching the video. So anyway, video is playing. Your phone is still fully operational. At this point, if I want to stop the video from playing, I'm going to swipe down from the top of the screen and you will have a pop-up here that says, it shows you what video is playing. Now from here, I can pause the video and you can actually swipe down with two fingers to get more menu options. So again, two fingers, I just swipe down. I can fast forward the video by moving this little white dot here. Maybe I wanna move to a different part of the video. I can just fast forward, keep going. And when you're finished, we're gonna tap on the X right here, and this will stop the phone from mirroring or uh, from sending the video altogether. So you have full control of the video from your phone, even though it's not fully mirroring. So if that was helpful, make sure you hit that like button right now. Show us some love for uh, showing off this cool tip. Now, I wanna go back and show this process one more time. Um, so let's go back to YouTube. Because if you have other devices, the process is gonna be exactly the same. And I just wanna show you how it's gonna look a little different. Now, one important thing to note is, um, obviously I'm demonstrating this process using uh, the YouTube app, but it's gonna work the same in just about all your video apps. So whether you're opening Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, when your video is about to play, you'll just need to look for that little cast icon because that icon is basically what um, you're gonna use to interact with the, the streaming device in your TV. So um, I showed you first how to do it with a Chromecast. Now, really the process is the same for the other three devices here. So I'm just gonna tap on the screen here and tap on that little cast icon. And what you're gonna see are all the available devices. Now at this moment in time, um, I have the Chromecast hooked up. We already walked through how to do it with that device. This is my Samsung TV. So guess what? If you have a smart TV and you have it connected with your Wi-Fi, as long as that's set up, you should see it as a device here as an option to cast to the TV. So right now I'm just going to tap on my Samsung device here. And if we give it a second, you'll see it's gonna change, YouTube is gonna pop up on the screen, and guess what, now I'm gonna be able to play that video on the TV using the Chromecast. Just make sure I hit this continue as A1. But there it is, my video is now playing on the TV, and um, I can now hit the home button here, and again, I can do other things on my phone while it's playing on the TV. I have those same options to pause. So, Here's the thing, if you have a Fire Stick TV, or if you have a, um, a Roku, the process is exactly the same. The only difference is that what's gonna pop up when you get to that menu, um, it's gonna say Fire Stick TV, or it's gonna say Roku. So right now, This list right here is gonna have your Roku or it'll have Fire Stick TV. That's the only difference. So that's how you would connect to your other devices. Now, one last important thing to note, um, this phone does not support Smart View. So unfortunately, those of you that have used previous Samsung phones and, and have used Smart View, you know that Smart View allows you to mirror your screen to a Smart TV 
or to a Roku device, but this phone does not have that functionality built into the software. So that's why we have to use these other means to mirror the screen to the TV. So I wanted to make sure I covered that because some of you are aware of that. You probably came with this video trying to figure out how to use the smart view feature. Well, it's not available on this phone. So it's unfortunate, but Samsung just didn't build it into this phone software build. So it is what it is, but I hope what I showed was helpful. And again, my goal was to show the entire process from beginning to end, how to mirror your screen to the TV um, using your different streaming devices. In the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to take a screenshot on your Samsung Galaxy A13. It's super easy. You're gonna just hold down on the power button right here and the volume button down for one second. Let's go ahead and try it. I find the easiest way to hold the phone is just uh, bringing your left hand around, holding the volume down button, and then holding the power button with your thumb, and then just pressing down at the same time. So let's try it. One, two, three, hold, let it go. It'll snap a screenshot. The first time it will ask you to allow um, the settings here, and then if you hit the crop button at the bottom, and sorry if that was a little fast, um, this will allow you to then crop the screenshot that you took and you can um, focus it to the area that you wanted for the screenshot or you can just have it cover the entire screen. That's up to you. You can also uh, tap the little pencil here and you can draw on the picture. Maybe you need to circle something or write a note. You can do that. And then you can share the picture immediately hitting this button or download it hitting this little arrow down button. And that's it. And once we go to our gallery, right here, you can see there's your screenshot right there. It's also going to create a uh, folder for you in albums. So if we go to albums, you'll now have a screenshot folder as well. well. Let me show you one more time, just in case you missed it. Volume down, power, hold, let it go. Screenshot, and then you can tap this crop button here, again, if you wanna crop the picture after. If you don't wanna crop it, if you just wanna take a screenshot and that's it, just hold, let it go. It'll take the screenshot, that menu will go away after a few seconds, and then that photo is gonna go right to your gallery. And we can go here, and now we have all of our screenshots we took right there. In the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through what to do if your screen freezes or all of a sudden it's not working. Um, you can do what's called a soft reset, which will restart the phone using the exterior buttons. And usually a restart will fix whatever the problem is initially. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a try. We're gonna hold on the power. There we go. We're gonna hold power and volume down and we're gonna hold it for uh, about 10 seconds. And once the screen goes dark, that's how we'll know that the soft reset was successful. Power, volume down. Let's hold it until the screen goes dark. One, two, three, hold. And it will take you to this menu. Just keep holding the volume down and power button. And once the screen goes dark, let go of the buttons. Give the phone a few seconds and you should see it automatically restart just like that. If it doesn't come on after about 10 seconds of going dark, just hold the power button and that will then turn it on. Um, doing a soft reset will not uh, hurt your phone or uh, mess up the settings. It literally is the equivalent of taking the battery out and putting it back in. For those of you that remember phones five years ago, if the phone was glitching or uh, the screen wasn't working properly, you would just take the battery out, put it back in, and then that would restart the phone. So guess what? Phones like these, the battery is, is sealed inside. You cannot take the battery out. So now they have this new option, which is the soft reset. And again, holding the volume down and power for a few seconds will trigger that process of taking the battery out and putting it back in so that uh, the phone can just restart itself and hopefully fix whatever problem you were having. Now, 
If the soft reset does not help and your phone continues to glitch or your screen is not responsive, then I would recommend you take your phone to a service and repair center and see if they can um, try to fix the screen or more than likely they'll have to replace the screen. Um, so that is the next step if the soft reset does not fix your problem. The first thing you'll need to do is swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel. And you wanna to go to the accounts and backup section and go to manage accounts. And you wanna find all the Google accounts and hit the remove account button. Make sure all Google accounts are removed. I'm gonna hit the back button. And I wanna point out one thing here, which is um, you do have an option to back up all of your data on the phone to a memory card before you do the factory reset. So just remember when you factory reset a phone, that is it, you cannot access that data, it will be erased. So if you do have a memory card, I would encourage you pop it in and you'll want to tap on bring data from old device. And this will take you to the Samsung Smart Switch app. You can then tap on the memory card and it will actually give you an option to back up all of your data to a memory card. That way, if you have important pictures, text messages, or et cetera, you can save them on the memory card before you wipe the data on the phone. Just a quick note. All right, let's go back, hit the back button and it will take you to back to this page here. We're then gonna come down to reset and tap on factory data reset. And as you swipe up, it's gonna show you all these apps will be erased. Hit the reset button. Now the final step is to hit delete all. And once you hit that, it will initiate the factory reset. And at this point, you'll want the phone to just sit don't touch it, it's gonna restart a few times and then you'll know the reset is complete because it will take you to a page that will say welcome and ask you to select a language. So I'm not gonna do the final reset because I don't want the phone reset right now, but that is the entire process from beginning to end. So hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.